What's up everybody, Nate here, and housing in the United States is currently headed towards something big that we have never seen before. Nearly 15% of Americans that are renters are behind on their rent right now as costs for rental units are spiking and skyrocketing throughout the country. Not only that, but on the actual housing side, we have seen a 25% drop in mortgage application rates over the past year. That means demand is getting sucked out of the market and there isn't really as many bidding wars as there was over the last couple of years. To make matters worse, we're starting to see credit availability drop in the United States. Meanwhile, foreclosures are starting to rise. They actually went up by around 15% in August. Now, Americans need housing in the United States. They have to find somewhere to live, whether that's with their parents, with a roommate, or if it's renting or with a house. So Americans are going to try to find every available option to get a home, and that is what we're starting to see right now from the buyer side. Adjustable rate mortgages are increasing. As just last week, they actually jumped up by around 12%. When compared to just over a year ago, they were only around two to 3%. And the amount that Americans are financing for their homes is also increasing. Americans are putting less down on their homes because they don't have the money for a down payment or closing costs, so they're financing near 100% of their home. Now, if nothing breaks in our economy, this really isn't the biggest issue, but we are also starting to see some other massive economic implications that could drastically affect the future of the housing market and could ultimately cause things to collapse. It's happening again. So today I kind of want to break down what is going on in the housing market, why we are starting to see all these figures go down and rise all of a sudden, and what all of this means for housing in the United States and our economy in the future. So first I want to address the renter side, right? So Americans have been pushed into renting because buying a home right now is crazy expensive. Not to mention interest rates are going up, so people are just barred from getting a home, but they have to live somewhere. Renting is something that a lot of Americans do because your credit doesn't need to be as high and you don't have to borrow that much money, if any money at all, in order to still live somewhere. So renting is kind of your next best option, but the problem is as more people have been unable to get into regular homes, they're now starting to get pushed into the rental market. And there's just as few homes and units available for renters as there is regular homes that you can buy, meaning that demand is really high, but supply is really low. That is meaning that prices are going up for just about everything in the US from your major cities to local suburban areas. Everywhere is going up in rent and Americans right now simply just don't have the money to pay for rent. I mean, seriously, Americans are spending 30 to 40 and almost 50% of their income on rent payments right now. And this is something that many Americans are forced to pay because they have to live somewhere. I mean, sure, they could move, but moving isn't really gonna help the situation if you're tied down to a specific job. The big problem with rent though is it's usually assessed on a year over year basis. So your landlord is going to look at your rent and adjust it every year. And typically it's going to go up. The cost to own a home right now for a landlord is also going up because taxes have gone up and insurance has gone up and maintenance costs are also going up too. So that means that all of those costs are just put on the renter. And eventually if the renter's not making that much more money, they can't afford a home. So they're simply not paying their rent right now. And this is a big problem considering we're about to have a lot more inventory enter the market. If you suddenly have renters that can't afford their rent anymore, well now you have a bunch of landlords that also can't afford their home. They're not gonna be able to pay out the mortgage that they took on that property. This isn't just a small issue because you got to remember over the last two years, many, many real estate investors and companies went out and bought homes. Actually, a large portion, 10 to 20% of all of the homes that were bought in 2021 were by real estate investors or big corporations trying to flip these houses or trying to rent them out for tenants for monthly income. That means if you continue to see more and more renters unable to afford their home. Now, a large portion of these homes are about to re-enter the market or they're about to go up for sale. And at the end of the day, this is kind of the last resort for a lot of Americans. And it means a gruesome detail could be coming for the United States economy and our society because if many Americans can't afford their shelter anymore through their rent, then they're gonna become homeless. And that is just an awful, awful situation, especially because many of these renters didn't ask for any of this and they're the ones that are ultimately 
ultimately being punished for it. Now we switch over to the other side, people trying to purchase homes that they can own. Well, demand has been slowly coming down, which means prices have been coming down in our economy. The main reason for this is because of interest rates by the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve has been getting very aggressive with their interest rate policies and with interest rates for mortgages hitting around the 7% mark, many Americans are just barred from getting a mortgage. So they're either not buying a home or they're trying to find somewhere to rent. Like I said though, as that demand comes down, that gives inventory time to come back on the market because we're also starting to see foreclosures go up. And when foreclosures rise in the United States, that means Americans are not able to afford their home, whether that's job loss or whether it's inflation causing them to spend more money on other things. And with all of these foreclosures going up, that means even more inventory is going to come on the market within the next few months. But Americans still can't afford to buy a home because interest rates are incredibly high right now. In 2021, many Americans overpaid for their home, probably more than they could afford to buy because the interest rate was super low. However, with things like inflation and job loss coming into the picture, now they can't afford their home today, but they can't re-enter the market because interest rates are so high. Interest rates are at 0% in 2021, so you could overpay for your home because you're gonna be saving money on the interest rate. Now though, you're gonna overpay for your home and you're gonna overpay because of an interest rate. How are many Americans getting around this? Well, they are going towards the adjustable rate mortgage route. So what an ARM or adjustable rate mortgage is, is that after a certain period of years, like five, 10, or 15 years, your interest rate is going to reset. So the interest rate that you initially get is probably going to be lower because it's actually a shorter term. You're going to be making bigger payments towards your principal. So many Americans are actually saving money right now by going the arm route. You're going to save around 1% in your interest rate. This is a possibly risky move though, because after that loan term is up, now the interest rate is going to reset and we don't know what's happening with the mortgage market or the interest rate market in the future. If interest rates go way back down, then you might actually make out and save a ton of money. But if they go way up, now your 7% interest rate could go up to 10%. That could mean many Americans down the line simply are not able to afford their mortgage anymore. And like I said, with other economic conditions right now, like businesses laying off people, potential unemployment caused by the Federal Reserve, now you have millions of Americans that can't afford their home anymore. This is exactly what happened during the 2007 housing market crash. Millions of people got into homes with adjustable rate mortgages and the bank basically told them that it doesn't really matter because your home is an asset and even if your interest rate goes up and you can't afford it anymore you can sell your house for probably more than you paid for it because the housing market always goes up right this is wrong well at that point it didn't go up so now people were underwater on their mortgage and when that interest rate reset they couldn't sell their house because they weren't going to be able to pay the mortgage off I've heard the same sentiment go on in 2022. Banks literally telling people, well, the housing market is going to go up. Look at what it's done over the last couple of years. It's just going to continue to grow in value. And that might be true. But if it's not, now, once again, you have millions of people that could risk going into foreclosure. That's going to affect people who are trying to sell their house because they might not want to sell their home if they're not going to be able to get a certain amount of value for it. So if they're not able to pay off that mortgage completely or get enough money, money to buy a new home, they're not going to want to sell their house. So that kind of sucks a little bit more inventory away. We could ultimately see a slightly but different problem than what we saw back in 2007. Back then, a lot of banks and financial institutions were giving out ninja loans. No income, no job, no asset loans. You basically could walk into a branch of a bank and want a $100,000 to $200,000 mortgage and you didn't have to have any income whatsoever. You didn't have to prove that you could actually pay that loan back. Banks kind of push this as being the American dream, right? Everybody wants a home in the United States, so everybody should have one. But if you can't afford to have one, then you're ultimately going to go into foreclosure, and that caused a lot of other problems and bled into other aspects of our economy. But this year, we have the economy bleeding into the housing market, so it's kind of reversed. Most banks of today make sure that you have some type of asset or enough income to afford your mortgage, but what they don't consider is if you 
are going to be able to afford this mortgage five years down the road. They only look at it when you get the mortgage. They don't keep checking on you after that. So when these banks and financial institutions gave out all this money for mortgages and for people buying houses in 2021, everybody was employed and all of this extra money was being floated around. Interest rates are at zero percent. Everything was great. But with the Federal Reserve now making some massive monetary changes, that could mean that many people ultimately lose their job. They actually predict that unemployment could rise to 4.4% by the end of next year, which means one to two million jobs are about to be lost. Now, we don't know how many of those people are homeowners, but the fact of the matter is that's how many Americans, if not most Americans, afford their houses through their daily income. If they don't have that income anymore, now they go into foreclosure. And that's just over the next year. The Federal Reserve right now is battling inflation with their monetary policy. They want prices to come down for everything, but the way that they do that is by raising their interest rates and making it really hard for people to borrow money. People, including investors. Investors are not going to be able to put as much money into the stock market, which means these businesses, and with these businesses not getting money in sales and not getting investor cash, well, now they have to cut costs, i.e. people, in order to continue to be a profitable and sustainable company. So in order for us to really start to bring down inflation from 8% to the Fed's 2% target, they're going to have to raise interest rates a lot more than where they are right now, and they could ultimately go up to 5 6 and 7%, which means people are still going to not be able to afford a home even if prices do fall significantly, meaning they're going to have to fall even further. Interest rates are at their highest point since 2002, which means banks and other financial institutions are going to start pushing more and more people into buying homes, put zero dollars down, finance everything that you can, go for arm mortgages, all so that way you can get that house of your dreams. But that might cause a debt cycle that ultimately eats away at everything, just like it did back in 2007. But that is it for today's business and financial news breakdown. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to stay up to date with all the top business and financial news from around the country, our team puts together a free daily newsletter and you can subscribe to it by clicking the link in this corner right here. And if you want to stay up to date with me and everything else happening in the business and financial world, I'm putting out updates seven days a week over here on this channel. And I've actually got another one ready for you right here. So be sure to check that out before you go. That is it for me, everybody. Be kind out there and I'll see you all in the next one.